Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming to hear about our fall plant sale. Uh, my name is Andrea DeLongamaya, and I'm the Director of Horticulture here at the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center. And this fall, we're going to be doing uh, our plant sale, as we usually do, except it's not going to be usual. We are changing it up, primarily because of the uh, COVID pandemic. And so one of the things that we're doing is instead of having our plant sale on one weekend, where we have hundreds of people close together with sharp elbows vying for plants, uh, what we've done is we are moving it into a smaller space. We'll have a limited number of people um, per hour, and we're going to have it over a longer period of time. So the plant sale actually is going to span um, nine weekends. So you have lots of time over the seasons to, uh, to come and get some uh, cool native plants. Um, otherwise, we're going to have a wonderful selection of plants available. It's going to be a little bit smaller availability than what we've had in the past because we're going to be focusing on selling plants that we've grown here on site. So a lot of the oddball things are what you're going to find more of and less of the common things that you might be able to already find at another garden center. So that's another, another uh, little perk just to know that a lot of those plants are going to be um, some of those hard to find native plants. And fall is really the best time to be planting. So um, you know getting things into the ground so they have a chance to establish over the winter uh, and get as situated as they can before the heat of the summer, which is the most brutal time of year for plants to survive throughout the, uh, the summer. So getting them a head start is really helpful. So that's why fall is the best time to plant. Um, but also just, you know, you're going to have a nice selection of stuff that you can see here. Uh, one of the questions that I've had is when people um, have come to our previous plant sales, they want to get first pick because they're worried that we're going to sell out of stuff. And because we're doing it over a series of weekends, each day we have a limited number of people that can come. We don't expect that we're gonna sell out as quickly and because we have a week in between each plant sale, um, we'll be able to restock. Um, so we will have plants, we will always have plants, we won't run out. Um, so the way it'll work is if, you're, uh, if you wanna come to shop, um, we are gonna be open from Monday, I'm sorry, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from nine to one each of those days. Um, starting now through the uh, uh, November 22nd, which is the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Some of our weekends are, al are already sold out, but we do have plenty of weekends that are not sold out. Um, so go check our website, uh, wildflower.org, and we have all sorts of information about the plant sale. Many of the things I'm talking about right now are reservation. Um, you would do that through our website also. We also have our plant list, um, the list of available species that we'll have, and we will be updating that every week so that you can have a pretty good idea of what we'll have available um, for any given weekend. Um, we will be bringing up new stuff as it's ready. One of the advantages of having the plant sale span over several weeks is that at the beginning of the season, certain things might not be ready, but then as the season progresses, we'll be able to bring up some of those things that um, have filled in and might look a little bit better and be more established for, for the sale. Um, while you're here, you'll have a reservation that's a two-hour reservation onto the Wildflower Center site into the gardens. The first hour you will spend at the plant sale, or you might not need a whole hour, but that's the reservation that you have. And then you can uh, buy your plants. We have a small holding area, so if you want to leave your plants with us, you can go and enjoy the rest of the gardens and explore on your own. Um, and then at the end of that two-hour reservation time period, um, you can go get your vehicle. We have a place where you can text us uh, your last name and we'll bring your plants to you. So that's a nice convenient way that you um, can get some assistance with loading. We really uh, encourage people to bring their own wagons. And one of the advantages to that is that we only, we do have a limited number of wagons, but uh, if you bring your own wagon, then you can purchase your plants and then take your plants with you. And you don't have to worry about that whole um, pickup um, situation that we have set up. So either way works, but uh, you'll have more freedom if you have your own wagon uh, to take your plants with you. Let's see, what else? Can you just uh, remind people what we're doing right now and then I'll just ask you some questions? Yeah, so um, what we're doing is uh, we're answering a lot of questions and explaining how our fall plant sale happens. Uh, feel free to submit questions to us and then uh, we will answer those questions as they come in. Um, we'll be talking just for a little bit and uh, hopefully getting you inspired to come and do some native plant shopping. Um, fall is also a really good time to see the gardens too. So even if you want to, you know, you're done shopping for plants, you can 
um, take advantage of being on site to go to other parts of the gardens and see what's happening. We have a few new features that you may not have seen if you haven't been here for a while. Uh, in the family garden, we have a new uh, exhibit in our stumpery. It's kind of a more of a, um, a playscape that uh, can, kids can jump and run around on. And we have a new dirt dig, which is an expanded um, dirt dig area from what we had in the past. So um, it'll accommodate a lot more people. We don't have it populated with toys. So bring your own toys. You're welcome to do that and then take them with you. Um, so those are some cool things that you can come and see that are new in the family garden. Um, we have a question? Yeah, we have a few. Um, so Margo White Tree asks if we will have Russian, Russian sage also called Bluebean Baby. Uh, no, we won't. Um, so the question was if we would have Russian sage or Blue Jean Baby. I haven't heard that common name before, but that's a wonderful name for that plant. Maybe you would answer lavender. Okay, Plant lavender. Answer. The question was also if we'll have lavender. So our plant sales, we, um, we only sell plants that are native to the state of Texas, and so those are not species that are native to Texas. So uh, we really just focus on our um, local native species. So if you're looking for things that aren't native to our area, I would suggest trying some of the other local garden centers for those plants. Mm -hmm. Okay, another question is about member base and how they're already sold out. So if you could just um, let us know about who can come to the public days. Yeah, that's a great question about members uh, member days. So we had two weekends re reserved just for members, and they did sell out pretty quickly. Um, They're popular uh, time frames. Um, and a, a lot of the reasons why people want to come uh, to the member sale, obviously, is because we have best selection at that point, which is true. Um, and we will likely sell out of a few things during those first couple weekends. But members can come throughout the whole plant sale. Uh, I think anybody who wants to come to the plant sale, get a reservation as soon as you can. But as I mentioned earlier, um, we may be selling out of a few things, but then we'll be bringing other new things that we maybe didn't have at the beginning of the plant sale. So there's going to be a rotation of different things available throughout the, uh, throughout the season. So you're not missing out necessarily. We'll, we'll have um, a whole cycling of things coming through. Someone asked about purchase limits on plants. We don't have a purchase limit on plants. It's You can buy whatever we have out. Um, we do have a time limit. <laughs> we do have a time limit. So <laughs> whatever, you can <laughs> whatever you can buy in one hour. And we will be clearing out the plant sale area at the end of that hour so that we can make space for the next group of people to come through. So it is helpful uh, to look, you know, look at our availability list online ahead of time and make your list before you come. That'll make your time more efficient when you're here. We're going to have limited number of staff available to help. Um, we will be available to help, but um, we didn't want to have too many people, uh, too many staff people in the space because that means that there's less space for shoppers. So we're trying to find that balance. Um, so the more homework you can do ahead of time, the more efficient you can be with your time on, uh, on the site in the plant sale area. Uh, we do have all of our plants that are organized by, alphabetically by genus. Um, in the past, if you've been to our plant sales, we've had different sections, like a plants uh, for shade section, a plants for sun section. This year we're simplifying that quite a bit. So really it's organized by four inch and one gallons on one side of the nursery and bigger items on the other side. So regardless of what species or whether they're woody plants or trees, um, they're just really spread out by size. And that's just really a logistical thing. Um, yes, another question. Yes, so someone asked about um, native, I just lost it, native passion flower swamp milk and swamp milkweed. We, um, we don't have swamp milkweed available, but we do have some native passion flowers. And really, if you're interested in knowing specifically what species we'll have, check our website. Um, we will be updating that list. Um, the most accurate will be probably Friday morning so that we've had a chance to um, update it uh, after the weekend previously. So if you look at our list, it is just an availability list, but it's, um, you know, we don't have quantities on there. So if we do sell out of something, it may or may not be actually available throughout the weekend. But as I said, we do have large quantities of certain things and we will be bringing up other things. Um, so keep checking back on that. I just also put that in the chat. Okay, yes, Angel has already put that in the chat too. So. You can see that. Um, um, someone wants to know if the, um, what are the size of the pots? That the, what are various sizes that someone might be able to pick up? Yeah, I can.
can tell you prices and sizes. So we have a lot of four inch plants. Most of our four inch uh, plants are gonna be $3. Um, we have a couple exceptions of any of the cacti and milkweeds because those are slower growing or harder to grow. So we charge $5 for the four inch milkweeds and cacti. Um, and then we have one gallon size containers, which are $9. Uh, except for milkweeds and cacti, which actually I don't think we have any of those in that size right now, but those would be um, $12 normally if we have them. And then we have five gallon size containers and that's $27. Members always get a 10% discount, so that's a nice perk of being a member. Um, we might have some larger plants, but a um, very small number of those that would be available because mostly we find that people aren't interested in planting anything really bigger than a five gallon. Yeah. Another question. Yeah. Can you ask if um, if everyone's getting good audio and video? I have a couple of mixed remarks, but I'm okay. getting good audio and video. So, so yeah, if you'll let comments. us know if you're getting good audio and, vid and video, uh, <laughs> if you do, yeah, just let us know because we're this is the first time we've ever done this um, live kind of thing. So um, it'd be helpful to get any feedback you might have on what your experience is on your end. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, maybe some. That sounds like maybe somebody who's been to one of my classes asking about the time sharing co combination. Michelle, Michelle, Michelle asked. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> so a good time share plant that you can mix with wine cup. Um, so wine cup is uh, a really beautiful spring blooming wildflower that has um, kind of low trailing foliage. Uh, it has a nice rosette through the winter, so it's evergreen, and then it just keeps growing throughout the winter and into the spring when it blooms. And then it blooms on long trailing stems. And then by the time summer comes around, it's looking a little bit ratty. And so what I like to do is cut it back. There's usually some nice new foliage at the base again, um, at the rosette. Uh, but then you have a lot of bare spots uh, after that. So one of the things that you can do, one of my favorite plants to combine with it is um, the uh, partridge pea, which is a very fast growing annual. And you should be able to purchase seed for that. Um, uh, what, so I would just make sure that you have, um, if you have mulch around your plants to make sure that the mulch isn't too thick because if you're gonna direct seed an annual like the partridge pea, you wanna make sure you have good um, seed contact with the soil. And they're very fast growing. They're annuals that like to grow in the warm season. They have a nice kind of airy, wispy foliage to them so they're not super dense and it won't crowd out your wine cups underneath, which is good. Um, and because they're fast growing, they fill in and they get to be blooming uh, blooming size and you know probably five or six weeks from when you plant them um, they also like similar conditions to the wine cup so full sun and good drainage and they bloom with a nice yellow flower all summer which is great they're also good for attracting butterflies the um, sulfurs as a group tend to um, lay their eggs on the plant and use uh, use the partridge pea as a host plant for their caterpillars so you have a lot of benefit with that plant another question easy one yeah uh, plant doors plant sales indoors or outdoors? What's it gonna be like? So what is it gonna be like? So um, it's gonna be in our nursery and it is outdoors. We have two greenhouses and then there's a shade house between them. Uh, so there will be some shade cloth over the top. Um, it's not dark shade. So if you're coming out and planning on spending a lot of time, I would still recommend all your sun precautions, your hat, your sunscreen, um, whatever protective clothing that you want. Um, and then the other side that has the bigger size plants will be open. Um, we do have a few chairs around, so if you need to take a little bit of a rest, that's good. Bring your own water bottle, which would be really handy. And then, of course, you know, face masks uh, will be a must. Um, and keeping the physical distancing of minimum of six feet, trying to keep that in mind. Um, there are very few touch points, so that's something that uh, other people have also asked. If you use one of our carts, uh, you'll want to wipe it down. We have some hand sanitizers. Uh, if you have a credit card, it's going to be credit card only. Um, a lot of people have a uh, chip in their card where they can just tap it onto our machine and that's great and then you don't have to push in any buttons. So, um, But we do have hand sanitizer if, if uh, you need to use that. Um, it's a, a nice cozy space. It's, it is open air so there's good ventilation but it's not as large and spread out as our previous plant sales were which is one reason why we have to limit the number of people per hour. Um, um, will there be a holding area and help loading our purchase? Yeah, so we do encourage people to bring your own wagon if you can, if you have one. Uh, that really makes it simpler for you because once you're done purchasing your plants, you can just take them with you and that's simple. 
But if you don't have a wagon, we do have a holding area and we can help you get those to your car when you're ready. The way it will work is you will pull into um, a couple of parking spots that we'll direct you to and then there's a number that you would text uh, and then our runner person will have a phone that will receive those texts when you're there and ready to pick up your plants and then we'll just take them up to you and help you load them. So uh, if you have space in your trunk that's cleared out, that's really helpful if you can do that ahead of time so that um, it's more efficient for our staff to be able to load your vehicle and not have to wait for you to move stuff around. So think about how you want to arrange your plants in your car, if it's the trunk or back seat, and be prepared for that. Um, will any other vendors be there? Oh, that's a good classes? question. Yeah, in, in previous years we've had um, the seed companies um, on site and also some of the local Native Plant Society chapters. Because of the limited space, we're not doing that this year. Um, we actually might be incorporating some Native Plant Society plants into our plant sale as we sell some more of our stock, so that's one of the reasons why we might have a wider variety of things later in the season. Um, and if you want to purchase seed, you can do that through our store here on site. So we do have seed available, but it won't be um, at the plant sale area. It'll be through our store. Someone asked, um, can you suggest plants for a hedgerow in clay soil? Plants that would do well to create a nice hedge in clay soil. Um, I would suggest, you know, Yopon Holly is a good one and it's nice and versatile. It'll take clay and what's also nice is it'll take full sun to quite a bit of shade. So I'm not sure if this is a shady or a sunny situation, but that's a nice one because it's versatile and it looks very similar to boxwood. So if, you're ha if that's the kind of look you're looking for, um, the dwarf Yopon Hollies would be great. They're slower growing than the boxwoods, which means that it might take them a little bit longer to get mature size. But the advantage is once they're mature height, um, you don't have to shear them as often. You know, if you have a box edge, you might have to shear them. Depending on how tidy you want them to look, you might have to shear them every couple weeks, especially if we've had a lot of rain. But the yopons um, don't take as much uh, maintenance in terms of shearing because they just grow a little slower. And they're nice dark green, which is really pretty and evergreen, of course. Um, if you have a lot of sun and don't mind something a little bit bigger, you can do um, the Ceniso or the Texas Sage, which is the silver plant that you've probably seen around town a lot. But they are also very nice to be sheared. They're pretty malleable. You can let them be more loose and free form, or you can keep them very tight um, and sheared really, really close. Um, they would need to have good drainage. They don't mind clay as long as it doesn't stay too wet. Um, so those are a couple options for you. So we're getting some questions about milkweed, and maybe you could just talk about milkweed for a little bit. I'll maybe talk about, about milkweeds, yes. What, what we <laughs> get a lot of questions those? about what, that. What would you say? What kind of questions do you commonly get? Yeah. Um, I have to just confess that we don't have a lot of milkweeds at our sale this year. They are pretty hard to grow, um, and we've had more in the past, but um, with a limited number of staffing and volunteers that we've had, we really haven't been able to do as much production on them. We have a few. Um, and those availabilities will be on our, we on our website on the plant list. Um, so just having gotten that out of the way, uh, I will say that um, fall is a good time to plant them if you can get them. You probably can purchase some seed to start them on your own from seed. And we have a wonderful how to grow them resource on our website. Um, if you go, yeah, I think Angel's gonna post that. Uh, if you go to our website on our learn tab, um, there's a whole section of how to uh, articles that range from how to grow milkweeds to how to grow wildflower meadow, uh, how to make seed balls, um, how do you select what kind of mulch to use, all different kinds of topics that you might want to look at. Our website actually has a lot of really great information that if you haven't really just gone in there and, and noodled around, you might check it out. So someone asked about monarchs, and if you'll also mention if we go to our landing page at wildflower.org mm -hmm. and scroll down, we do have a, a monarch resource link right there. But if you would also talk about some good nectar plants for monarchs. Yeah, so if you go to our, um, our, pay, our website um, and scroll down on our homepage, there's uh, some information there about monarchs. Um, so that's a good tip to, to have there. We also do have other how-to articles um, and more information about monarchs and milkweeds in particular. Um, so fall actually, even if you don't, if you're not able to purchase milkweeds, um, fall is actually more critical for the uh, monarchs as they're migrating through to supply nectar sources for them. They are doing most of their egg laying and caterpillar growth uh, in the Midwest through the summer, but this time of year, 
they're not doing that as much. Um, they're really trying to get down to Mexico. Um, and so being able to fuel their migration with a good nectar source is really critical. And we will have all kinds of species of uh, wildflowers that will be blooming in the fall that would be great nectar sources for those butterflies as they're coming through. A few examples would be some of the uh, mist flowers. We have Greg's mist flower and Betany leaf mist flower. Um, we have uh, um, a new plant actually right behind me here. This one is one that we haven't really had for sale at our plant sales before, and it's the uh, Strawberry Fields um, Gomfrina, and that's a good nectar source for a lot of different things, uh, including monarchs. Um, we also have a few um, frostweed, which is a plant that um, has a, a cluster of white flowers on a really tall plant, um, and those are really great for shade. So for those of you who are looking for plants that'll do well in shade, that's a good option for you too. Uh, but they bloom in the fall and they are really great nectar sources for monarchs. Um, of course, Texas lantana is another good one. Uh, so a whole variety of things, uh, lots more that I haven't mentioned. Pretty much anything that's going to be in the sunflower or aster family is a wonderful plant that will provide nectar. Anything in the verbena family is another good option for, for both monarchs and other species of butterflies. And a lot of those will attract hummingbirds too, so that's another benefit. Um, so lots of things. Um, another thing to keep in mind too is as you're shopping for plants uh, to provide either larval food for caterpillars or nectar sources, um, maybe you've heard of the concern that people have about neonicotinoids or neonics that uh, are systemic insecticides that are often used on flowering plants uh, in the nursery trade because they're really effective at keeping other pests down, but because it's a systemic uh, it can actually be toxic to the beneficial insects that you're trying to attract. So if you're planting plants specifically to provide nectar for uh, insect pollinators, you wanna pick and you wanna select plants that don't have um, neonicotinoids uh, on them. And the plants that we're growing here at the Wildflower Center, we don't use that. So that's another, uh, something that you can rest assured that your plants are clean from that. Angel has a word for you. Hi everyone, I'm Angel. I'm helping out with the event on the other side and I'm keeping distance from Andrea to stay safe. I know you can't see my mouth because I'm keeping my mask on because we're sharing space. Um, I will ask Andrea to continue to repeat questions. I think she's doing a great job of that. If you hear me off to the side, you're not really supposed to be able to hear me. That's okay. She'll repeat the question and watch for this woman. <laughs> Okay, great. Um, I mentioned it earlier, but I'll just stress it again that it would be really easier for you uh, as you're coming to shop at the plant sale if you have your plant list um, organized by um, botanical names. You might have your common names also, but when you're looking around for things, it'll be easier if you know what the botanical name is that you're looking for. So just having that written down or printed off on a piece of paper will make it a little bit easier. That's just a nice little tip for you. Do you and feel free to keep questions. Do you have any recommendations for plants to complement floor serve for lawn type areas? Maybe you were talking ground cover. To complement the floor serve, uh, trailing daisy, mm -hmm. maybe for a, for a lawn type situation. Uh, so I think that they're talking maybe more about like other ground cover. Other kind of ground covers. Okay, so the question is about um, prostrate lawn flower or horse herb as we call it, also known as straggler daisy, which is a beautiful little native plant that often will grow on its own in a shady spot. Like if you have a shady backyard that has weeds in it and you're trying to grow a lawn and you have weeds, it's probably encroaching. Uh, you probably have some of the horse herb in there. And um, one of the things you could do is just encourage it. Um, I really like it. It's, it's not a grass. It's a little flowering plant with little tiny yellow flowers on it, but it stays short and it makes a really nice ground cover. Um, it's also called lawn flower because it makes a good lawn substitute. And you don't have to mow it as much uh, or at all if you don't want to because it stays short on its own. So the question was, what's a good complement? And uh, I'm not quite sure what complement um, would need to be. It, it is uh, a perennial, so it comes back on its own every year. It's actively growing through the summer. In the wintertime, it might go dormant if we've had a hard freeze. If it's in a protected spot, it might not freeze back, but it might freeze. So one um, thing you could do is to plant something like baby blue eyes over, you know, you could seed that out over your lawn flower or straight, uh, the horse herb 
that would then bloom early in the spring and then go away by the time the horse herb starts to green back up again. So if it's more of that time sharing kind of um, uh, situation, that would be one um, combination that you can do. Some other ground covers that uh, you could consider, we have some sedges. We have like Texas sedge or meadow sedge. Those are two different species that are really, really pretty plants that do really well in a shady situation. They make a nice ground cover. Um, they kind of look similar to monkey grass, but they have a finer leaf blade or um, finer texture to them. But they're also evergreen, which is nice. Um, so some of the sedges are really good ground covers for shady spots uh, as well. Um, frog fruit would be another um, good ground cover choice in certain situations. And I say that a little bit with a caveat because um, they're pretty robust uh, once they get going and, and get established. They're a pretty strong plant, which is good. Uh, but if you're trying to keep it out of your flower beds, it's really hard to manage. So ideally where I would recommend people planting them would be in an area where you really do just want them to take over um, and you have a lot of space for them. Because what they do is they send runners along the surface of the ground and then wherever there's a node that's touching the ground, it'll send roots down. And that's part of why it's such a vigorous plant, but it also makes it really hard to weed out and it likes to finger its way into your garden bed. So. Um, but if you have a large area or maybe it's uh, an area that's bordering a sidewalk that you're going to trim anyway, that would be good. It also is really pretty in a hanging basket too. And they have little tiny uh, clusters of white flowers that are good for attracting some of the smaller pollinators. Um, I see hair streaks and um, some of the smaller butterflies that like to take nectar from it. It's also a larval food plant for the Fayon Crescent. So it, um, it does have some uh, wildlife benefit to it also. So that's kind of fun. And frog fruit is just such a silly name. It's just fun to say. Any other questions? Yeah, um, someone asked if you could reiterate what you meant by how their plants will be organized. Um, they asked if I could think of a name and maybe you could touch on that again. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just uh, explain a little bit again about how the plant sale is organized. So what you'll do is if, when you come to the Wildflower Center, you'll check in at the admissions kiosk as normal. Um, they'll give you a wristband and you will be directed to go back towards the theme gardens and then veer to your right. You'll see where our greenhouses are and then there's a ramp um, that you'll go down the ramp and go back down into the nursery and then at the hour, at the top of the hour when your reservation starts, so say you have a reservation for 10 a.m., at 10 o'clock we will open the chain and let everybody in for that um, hour group. Um, and so if you go, if you look to your right, you'll see that we have our succulents, like we have uh, some cacti, mostly four inch cacti, and then we'll have a bigger area that has the gallons and five gallon section in it. And then if you go to your left, that area will be more of the four inch and one gallon, so some of the smaller plants. When I say smaller, I mean that that's the size container that they're in, but that doesn't mean that that's the ultimate size that they will get. So we have some trees actually that are even in four inch pots. Um, and we might have some herbaceous plants that are in larger containers, so it doesn't depend on how big the plant will ultimately get. And then in each of those two sections, uh, our plants are all or, uh, organized alphabetically by genus. So that's where having a plant list available, I mean, when you have your availability list ahead of time, uh, make sure that you get the common and botanical names, or at least the botanical names will make it easier for you. Um, so if you come and you say, I would like some mist flower, there are a lot of things that are called misflower, and so if you have the, um, the botanical name with you, we can uh, more easily find the plant that you're looking for. Yeah. Um, can you speak to trees for just a minute? Maybe you said this is just the very best time to plant trees. And it is the very best of, time to plant trees. Can you speak of any tree species that you're fond of that you have, have available at, each, at the beginning of the plant sale? Yeah, that's a great question. So the question was about trees and talking about trees. Fall is definitely the best time of year in our area to plant trees because uh, it gives um, those plants a lot more time to get established over the fall and winter before the heat of the summer hits next year. Uh, that is the most stressful time for plants in our area is the summertime. So if you can allow those plants to grow their roots all throughout the winter, the tops might be dormant. They might not have any leaves on them. They're not going to be growing above ground, but they're doing a lot of work underground and getting, uh, getting their roots to really get going. Um, so we do have a few uh, trees that we'll have available at our plant sale. A couple that come to mind, well we have several different oaks um, and I don't recall exactly which species off the top of my head but I know we have a few. 
Um, another one that uh, I think is really fun right now is more of a small tree or large shrub called kidney wood. And if you're around the hill country right now, you'll, you'll see them, they're blooming. You'll smell them maybe even before you see them. But they have a spike of white, little uh, white flowers on a cluster on a spike. Um, and man, they just smell amazing right now. And after this cooler weather we've had and the rain, they're just blooming all over town. They just, they're wonderful. And we do have a few of those available right now. Um, they are also amazing plants for attracting different kinds of pollinators. So pollinator plants definitely on the list. Do you mind just running through a few of the other categories of plants that we'll have available? I know it's on our crawling field, but do we have water plants, shade plants, sun plants? Yeah, that's a good question. So even though um, the plant sale is not organized by type of plant, it's really just alphabetized everything. Uh, so that means that we will have water plants, but they're going to be alphabetized with everything else. Um, We'll have sun and shade plants, but they're going to be all mixed in with each other, just um, arranged by uh, botanical name. We'll have trees and shrubs and grasses and ground covers and vines, um, cacti, I think we mentioned that already. Um, we don't have a lot of pond plants this year, of things that you would actually submerge into your pond. We don't have water lilies, for example, but we have edge plants. We have a few different species of uh, hibiscuses that would do really well with wet feet. Um, other things like water willow. Um, so there are a few other things too besides just the water lilies that we are going to miss out for this time of the year. So yeah, all different kinds of plants. And it looks like we don't have a lot of more questions. So if you would uh, just review, just for anyone who missed the beginning, mm -hmm. sort of uh, when plant sale, what plant sale, and a couple of your best tips of how to have a great plant sale. Great. So for those of you who might have missed the very beginning of this, uh, presentation. Uh, I'll just kind of give some more of the basics again. So we're having our fall native plant sale here at the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center. Um, we are having them on the weekends, so Friday, Saturday, and Sundays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, we are doing it by reservation only, so before you come, please get your reservation online. So go to our website and you'll find out all the information on how to do that. Um, you'll have a two-hour time slot which gives you one hour admission to the plant sale on the first part of your time slot. And then you'll have your second hour to explore the gardens if you wish. Um, so once you get to the plant sale, you, uh, we, we ask if you have your own cart to please bring it and that simplifies it for you and for us because then you can put your plants in, uh, in your cart and take them to your car and you don't have to mess with um, you know, putting them in the holding area, which we do have. So if you wanna shop and then um, pick up your plants uh, from our parking lot, we can actually bring them to you if, that, if that's the way that, uh, that you can do that. Um, I know I'm forgetting stuff. No, that's great. Um, so. <laughs> There's just so many parts to it, but I think we've uh, planned it out to be a fairly uh, streamlined process for people. We did a little test run with our volunteers to help us just make sure that we worked out all the kinks, and I think it's uh, pretty smooth. Um, but it is gonna be in a different location, so if you've been to our plant sales in the past, don't go to our parking lot. You want to go down to our nursery, um, and we have a nice um, little setup down there. Um, and we'll, we'll have some. We'll we have some signage. Yeah, we'll, we'll have people help you get to the right that. spot. <laughs> and Definitely. maybe we should let people know that after they're done with um, plant sale, they would be welcome to go stroll to Portlandia. They'll have another hour or the sort of like the bank of their time left. Yeah. So if you're coming to our plant sale. Um, not this first weekend of the plant sale, but the second week of our plant sale is also the same weekend of our opening of our Fortlandia exhibit. And that's members only. And that's members only. And then it'll be open to the public after that. Um, so if you are coming to the plant sale and you have reservations, um, you can also go and explore Fortlandia starting, when is it open to the public? October 5th. October 5th. And we'll actually be open until 7 p.m. every day. Right, yeah, we're going to be open late. We'll be open um, till 7 p.m., and that just allows more people to come to see Fortlandia, and that's starting in October. Yeah, so find more information on our website. A lot of the things I've said already, we have written down on there. Um, explore our plant list. Um, and if you have any other questions, you can email us um, or just come on down and we can uh, answer questions in person. You can also call us up on the phone. Um, but happy gardening and come, we hope to see you at our plant sale. All right, bye everybody, thank you.